I think we've blathered enough. Let's go and give some time to some amazing people. We got about 60 seconds before we go to them, but what we want to do is please make sure to stay tuned for all of the cool Absolutely. stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you're going to learn. There's a lot of fun stuff that we're going to do after, and we want your comments. Above all, we want your questions. We will get them up here on the tag board. There's 24 already. I'll, I'll push this button and then we'll start to ask them. I'm going to be the Vanna White today of Visual Studio 2019. I'm very excited about that. And so without further ado, let me introduce two people. Well, let's have you introduce yourselves. We have Joseph and Amanda. Tell us who you are and what you do. We'll start with you, Amanda. Sure. I'm Amanda Silver. I'm the Director of Program Management for Visual Studio and VS Code. Fantastic. And I'm Joseph Hill. I'm Director of Program Management for Visual Studio for Mac and Xamarin. VIPs, as we like to call you too. So why don't you give us like a small recap of the stuff that we talked about. Just a, a tiny one so that we can get the pump prime for people to ask questions. We'll start with you, Joseph. Um, well, yeah, so as I said, Visual Studio for Mac, right, uh, Xamarin, pretty excited. I think uh, Visual Studio 2019 developers will be super excited about the improvements yeah. we've made to performance and stability for, for both Xamarin and Visual Studio for Mac. In Visual Studio, we've reduced the download size a lot. So as you're going through installing Visual Studio 2019 today and you're thinking, oh, can I put 25 gigs of mobile development tools on my, on my desktop? It's, uh, it's like one third that size now. So you should definitely opt into that. Fantastic. So did you just zip stuff up or what is it? Was there something? Yeah, that's right. We like somebody introduced us to this uh, this archiving tool <laughs> and uh, we're like, wow, this is great. Why aren't we using we this? Tarted DGZ yeah. it all up. That's awesome. Yeah. Amanda, what about for you? Uh, yeah, I mean I think today is the big news of Visual Studio 2019 being being ready for everybody to take on. Um, so, you know, there's a kind of get first uh, start experience so that you can really get into the flow with your code that your other teammates are working on. Right, um, there's Visual Studio Live Share kind of in the Visual Studio 2019 um, box out the gate. So basically, we have um, both collaboration at the check in time um, so that you can actually go and review uh, pull requests and things like that inside of Visual Studio, but also pre check in. So you can actually have a real-time uh, collaboration session with somebody else that you're working with. Um, the other things that are super exciting are you know, Visual Studio and Telecode we talked about, which basically is kind of the first steps towards allowing um, AI and machine learning to basically enhance your productivity as a developer. Um, but there's so many things that I can't even, I can't even name all of them, right? Um, we've improved the uh, UI a little bit uh, so that it just feels a lot cleaner, so you have uh, headspace to kind of focus on the code that you're writing. We've improved the search capability in Visual Studio 2019 so you can actually discover uh, new, new uh, features that you might not have been familiar with previously. One of my favorite features is actually that we've moved the C++ debugging out of process. And so that has been absolutely huge for people who are working on very large scale C++ applications, um, especially folks like uh, those that are working on AAA games because they, they used to have a situation where they would basically run into out of memory exceptions in the debugger after about like five, 10 minutes of, of coding. And then all of a sudden now they, they really don't run into those things anymore. They, ha they can have, you know, half hour, hour, you know, couple hour long debugging sessions. And, and that's pretty amazing because I saw there was actually debugging like a huge game and just like a game by itself is pretty big and now when you have all the debug symbols and you have to keep track of all, I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing what you're able to do with that. Yeah, we have a lot of testimonials from folks who are building large scale C++ applications that it really is a game changer. Awesome, so let's get to the questions and then I'll intersperse with some of mine. We have here uh, my friend Toby Loba, what features do the Community Edition ship with? Uh, so actually our Community Edition is actually exactly the same as our Professional Edition. It just has different licensing restrictions on it. So any of the features that are in our Professional Edition are also available in the Community Edition. And obviously that's thousands and thousands and thousands of features. I can't, I can't name all of them. That's cool. So let's start a little bit with some of the streamlining that happened. You both mentioned there was some streamlining that happened with Visual Studio. Can you talk a little bit more in depth about that? I did notice myself, because I installed the RC last week, there was some snappiness to it. How did we make it a little bit faster? I know this happened in Visual Studio for Mac as well as uh, Visual Studio for Windows, yes. Yeah, so just to start with Visual Studio for Mac, um, we, uh, we've started to take code from Visual Studio over to Visual Studio for Mac. And uh, luckily, like our editor is where we've been putting a lot of the work. It's written in C Sharp. We, uh, Microsoft's, you know, 
already had uh, an editor written in C Sharp. So being able to bring it over to the Mac uh, resulted in like, we have like 95% of the code for our new editor coming from the Windows implementation. But it's also snappy because uh, we were able to move to a native Cocoa front end. And, um, and so we get like native scrolling and uh, better support for uh, right to left rendering, word wrap. A lot, of, a lot of features we couldn't do in our previous editor we're able to do through um, building on a, on a native you know, rendering base with, with like, like you said, streamlining's where it's at, bringing over Visual Studio Code, and we're, we're eyeing the future, the roadmap, more features that we can bring over from Visual Studio and, and develop features in, in, um, in conjunction with Visual Studio. Uh, Amanda mentioned earlier, Get to Code. That's, uh, we're super excited about that because that's a feature we were able to bring to both IDEs at, uh, at the same time with launch today. What does Get to Code mean? Uh, so Get to Code is basically the idea that we want you to get into your coding environment and become uh, productive in the zone while you're, while you're programming as quickly as possible. Right. And so, you know, Visual Studio originally was designed in an era when everything was installed on a, a bunch of disks that you would buy off of a shelf at some large, you know, big box, uh, you know, digital store, mm -hmm. and then you'd install all of it, including help and all of the templates and all of that kind of stuff. Um, Nowadays, a lot of developers really start with either hosted repositories that are hosted in a private server or, you know, hosted in a public repository. And so if that's really where people are starting, we wanted to make sure that that is a really super productive experience inside of Visual Studio 2019. So if you open up Visual Studio 2019, you're going to see kind of a um, streamlined start experience where uh, the options are start from an online repo, start from you know a, a template, a create new project, um, start from an open project or anything that you've opened recently, um, and so on. And so, uh, so you can really get into the zone of coding as quickly as possible. I, I, honestly, that's probably one of my favorite features where I start it up and it actually starts up. Now, I wanted to, you were going to talk, because <laughs> no, usually like it took a long time. Look, I'm being honest here. We're all friends here. But now it's like really snappy. I get to what do you want to work on? Yep. I think that's, that's really the goal is we wanted to make sure that everybody who's new to the product, uh, but also those who have been using the product for years and years and years can basically get into the zone coding as quickly as possible. Now, Joseph mentioned a little bit about some of the streamlining that happened in Visual Studio uh, for Mac. Can you describe a little bit some of the streamlining that went on in Visual Studio for Windows? Well, I mean, in some ways, uh, so Joseph was talking a lot about kind of the installer and things like that. And we have definitely improved the install experience, the update experience, and things like that in Visual Studio 2019. Uh, a lot. Um, but some of the ways that it's been streamlined are actually kind of UI changes. So, uh, so if you start up Visual Studio 2019, you might notice that there's a slight uh, color theme change from Visual Studio 2017. Um, and if you put them side by side, uh, you'll actually, I, I find that Visual Studio 2019 feels just cleaner and you're not really quite sure why, um, but we've done a lot of work to actually make sure that we've, you know, cut bezels and we've cut, you know, repetitive um, text and stuff like that so that you can really be focused on, on your code. Um, we've also kind of streamlined the menuing system so that it actually occupies one less row so that you have one more row of, of code that you can focus on. And then uh, I think the other thing is, you know, with the enhanced kind of search experience, uh, you now don't, don't need to as often hunt and peck through the men menuing system to find the thing that you need. Uh, what I find using Visual Studio 2019 is if I want to use a certain feature or, you know, install a component that I hadn't installed previously, that I can actually just go to the search menu, you know, type whatever I'm looking for, and it'll come up there, and it'll then kind of streamline my experience exactly to the menu that I need. Awesome. Uh, Joseph, do you have something? I was just going to add to that, yeah, because on Xamarin, especially impactful is the we've really improved the solution load time and solution creation time. So, um, you know, it's that's a snappier feel too when you're able to Yeah, I mean, right I didn't it. even touch on that, but <laughs> well. <laughs> performance is absolutely huge. I mean, I talked about the C++ uh, debugger being out of proc and the impact that that has, but we've also done some pretty amazing things in terms of um, solution load time, project load time, as well as unit test discovery. Um, so that it's now getting started in any typical project is, is you know, uh, tens of percentage points better. That's awesome. I mean, I, I personally noticed it. Like I said, I usually, I've been doing a lot of work in Visual Studio uh, Code with Python, 
And they said, I was, they were like, hey, you got to do this AI thing. I'm like, and they said, hey, you can do Python in Visual Studio. I'm like, oh, can you? And I went in there and it's a surprising, like it, it felt like I was back in my C Sharp days, but it was Python, which was really cool. All right, from Frank Ofoedu, from all the way from Nigeria, will there be an offline ISO installer for the community version? This will help developers here who don't have stable internet connection uh, there. Yeah, so we, we actually haven't been doing an ISO installer with 2017 or 2019. Um, what we have is a layout option so that you can actually create your own offline installer and then access it that way. So you could certainly use you know, Azure or something like that to create that layout and then, and then install it from there. Cool. All right, so from Ken we have, can a single developer release a commercial app on Community Edition if there are restrictions? Can you please elaborate? Yeah, so, uh, so the community edition is basically for teams that are smaller than five. So that is definitely something that's supported with community. Awesome. Here's another one uh, from Shannon. Will there be an issue if my team uses VS 2017 and check in code into Git while using uh, 2019? Will we be constantly batting for updates of the solution project files? Meaning, is it the solution different? Um, so, so the solution generally should not be different. You should be able to actually collaborate on them. But for the most part, what we suggest is that you have basically a team that's kind of looking at migrating your solution to 2019. You can do this on the same box. So the, I think the important thing is that an individual developer can kind of uh, go and survey the new release. And they can do it side by side on the same box without actually impacting um, the rest of their source code or the stability of their 2017 install um, and evaluate it and then kind of migrate the team over to the 2019 version. I see. And this goes to a little bit of what Samuel is asking here. Can you upgrade from VS 2017 to 2019? You can actually have them both at the same time and not even interfering with each other. Is that right? That's right. So, so you can install 2017 right next to 2019 and actually, you know, in fact, I do use you know, some sometimes and some and when the other the other times. One of the things that we've really worked on in the last version is streamlining the upgrade experience from 2017 to 2019. So where in 2017 you would have to kind of pick the workloads, basically pick which SDK is what project types you wanted to work on. Um, if you've already done that in 2017, then you're update experience to 2019 should be super, super easy because we've basically migrated all of your, all of your settings, all of your workloads to the 2019 installer. Now here's a, here's a fun question. Uh, was there any really big features that you wanted to include but didn't make the cut? Now it feels like recently Visual Studio we've been putting out stuff super early. It's not like it used to be like you know we'd wait two years and then it would come in this huge box. Uh, tell us a little about how you plan and, and what goes into releases. Both you want to take that one, Joseph? Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, it speaks right to the heart of the of the VS for Mac uh, release. We listen to uh, feedback from from users, and we we test uh, features as we're going. And uh, the really big push that we have for VS for Mac uh, 2019 is to switch the editor over to that editor I was describing earlier. That's a preview uh, today in VS for Mac 2019. Uh, you can go into your preferences and select. The new editor, it's a great experience and I recommend you do it. Right now it's in C Sharp, but we held it back from turning it on by default because it just wasn't the right call, it wasn't the best thing for users. Um, but uh, as that comes online, like you know, in, in updates to 2019, we'll have it on by default very soon, uh, followed by additional languages, XAML, JavaScript, uh, Razor Blazor, et cetera. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, so I, you know, especially with our update cadence, where we now have uh, preview releases coming out super regularly, and we have updates coming out every you know few weeks or so. Um, I don't. I never feel terrible about actually not getting a particular feature into Visual Studio because I know that it's coming down the road uh, super quickly. Um, there are come. There are a couple that that are. Uh, in basically like preview at this point, that will make it into an update shortly. Um, one that comes to mind is time travel debugging. Um, another one is the um, IntelliCode kind of being in the box. Another one is, uh, is the PR experience. All of those things will be coming up in future updates. And I think one of the things that's really changed over the last couple of years in terms of how we manage Visual Studio and kind of talk about it with the community is we're actually pretty transparent about what our roadmap looks like. And so you can actually look for a Visual Studio roadmap and you can see all of these features that are coming down the pike. Yeah, and this is very different than what it used to be because I remember we would just be like, oh, wow, 
It's out, but I, I have talked to, for example, just with languages, with Mads Torgerson, I have talked to him years in advance before some, like C-sharp 8's coming out, and I talked to him like a year and a half ago about the features that they were just thinking about, which is pretty cool. Now I'd like to move on to IntelliCode, because I'm a machine learning person, and this is an interesting question that we're going to table just for a second while you talk about IntelliCode. What is it? And maybe there's some concerns that people have. How do you address them? Oh, for example, he's, he's worried uh, if IntelliGo suggests code according to what most people use, couldn't that cause bad practices around the world as a result of most people using old inefficient practices? Yeah, so I mean, IntelliCode is, some, is, a, is the first steps in a long road towards uh, allowing machine learning to enhance your developer experience. And so, um, so the first thing that we did is we actually trained it on public repos that were highly rated. And so we assumed that if they were highly rated, that that probably meant that they were decent code. Um, what we've now added is the ability to train your IntelliCode machine learning models on your own custom code, even private code, um, that's that's unique to your team. Uh, and so, you know, you actually can select kind of which uh, repos you use to train those models. Yeah, so it's basically you get to choose what models you do. Yeah, that's right. And not only that, once you do that, once you choose to train on a model, which might take a couple of minutes um, to kind of get the model back because it actually has to go and, and kind of calculate it in the yeah. cloud, create the machine learning models, um, you can actually share that model with your other teammates. So let's say you're a developer that's inside of a large enterprise with lots of developers on it, and you build a common framework for your team. Uh, you could actually train the IntelliCode model on that common framework and then share that uh, share that model just like you would share any kind of you know library or a, or a, re a source repo um, with the other developers on your team. So they don't even need to go through the process of training it on that on that custom library. You've done that. You've curated that, and then you can make sure that they have the most productive experience on that library. And I think that's an important distinction, right? Because like he brings up a good point. What if it's not according to the way we want to do it? That's the way I read it. You can actually use your own code and train it on that and have your own style as, as a company uh, in the model. Okay, right. uh, a couple more questions. There was, uh, there's one new coming in here. Uh, this one's a funny one. How fast can I install Visual Studio 2019? Uh, so the absolute minimum installer for Visual Studio 2019 should take about two and a half minutes. Um, but of course, that comes with no workloads. So what you're going to get with that is basically like a lightweight editing experience with um, lightweight language services. So you know you might get some uh, grammar and syntax. You might get some grammar and syntax checking, but not really kind of semantic analysis. It's pretty fast. I mean, like I downloaded a couple of workloads, and it was like I download. I, I always check all the things, which I probably shouldn't do. <laughs> and that, that takes a little bit of time because you're downloading a lot of different workloads, but I, I feel that the greatest thing is you have choice in what it is that you put on. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, we've definitely been working to try to make sure that our installers for various workloads are a lot yeah. more lightweight. Yeah, that's why I smiled when I heard the question because I was like, man, you know, config, depending on the configuration, like the, the install times have just dropped so significantly. Yeah. And yeah, minimal, two minutes, sure, but like for your workloads, it's, you're, you're going to be pleased. Because we, we learned how to zip, of course. That's right, we just, exactly. We just figured out. Uh, here's a really important question. Is the new Visual Studio 2019 editor ADA compliant? Yeah, so we've definitely been working on improving the accessibility of Visual Studio 2019 for, for a couple years. And actually, 2017, I believe, was ADA compliant. Um, but we continue to work on that uh, and, and improve that. OK, awesome. So what other features did you really, because uh, we talked about speed. We talked about uh, we talked about IntelliCode a little bit. Is there another feature that you, you feel people should really look at in Visual Studio 2019 for both of you? Putting you on the spot here. <laughs> um, the um, why well, I, I sure I sure <laughs> leapt in to fill some some audio space. I'm stalling for Amanda because I know nice. she's gonna have a great one. <laughs> no, I mean, I think some of the stuff that we've done, uh, like for example, we've introduced debug search. Uh, so basically, if you're in the middle of a debugging session, you can actually go and um, search uh, for 
different levels of all of the variables that you might want to get values for. So you can basically kind of search on possible expressions that you might want to evaluate in the debug session. Um, we have a lot of new diff like refactoring features. So one of the big uh, capabilities that we've introduced is um, code cleanup. So you can actually kind of go and, you know, if you have style guidelines with an editor config, which actually can be inferred using IntelliCode, um, then you can actually go and just hit a hotkey, Control-K, Control-D for most people, and it'll, it'll clean up that entire file. Um, so there are tons of goodies like that. But we also didn't even talk about kind of deploying to Azure, right? So, um, or to Docker or containers or Kubernetes. So a lot of kind of what we've also been working on is making, making it so that, you know, cloud native applications are super easy to author with Visual Studio 2019. That's cool. Yeah, because I mean, we can write all the code we want, but if it falls in the forest and there's no one around, <laughs> does it even make a sound? It's, we got to put it in the cloud, right? A question for you, when will the Python tools in Windows version land in the Mac version? Uh, no ETA yet. Um, I think we're definitely listening to, to feedback there, interest. We have the ability to add new languages and uh, we're doing that all the time, but uh, you know, Python's not, it's not on the immediate uh, delivery. But, but hey, reach out to me yeah. and uh, I would love to hear how you, how you want to use Python. If enough people yell at Joseph. That makes it happen. I'm just saying. We had donuts here this morning because we all yelled at Joseph. <laughs> All right, from Evan, how do I get the new colorization of the text in VS 2019 if the installer is automatically importing my 2017 color configuration? So, uh, so I, this question is slightly ambiguous. I will answer it in two ways, kind of assuming that it's two different questions. Um, so one is, uh, I spoke a little bit earlier about the theming updates in Visual Studio 2019. So that, uh, if you're using the default light theme, then that you'll just automatically get the default light theme. You can always go back and reset your settings for, a th for the theme and kind of set it to the default light theme and then you'll get those new kind of color options. That doesn't necessarily impact your, your text editor options um, because if you have your own custom settings for what you want your, your editor to look like, then that will override what our, theming, our default theming does. And so for that, you'd have to go into tools options and reset. basically reset. Yeah. So we care more about what they set in there as opposed to what we want. Yeah, because there are a lot of people who have very particular uh, preferences. True. Or I, mean, I saw somebody, I think this was an April Fool's joke, but I saw somebody yesterday who was talking about the hot dog theme <laughs> that they'd like to set on their uh, colleagues so that uh, basically it's a red background with yellow text. Oh, uh, so if somebody I, steps out without locking oh, their machine, oh, they, they do that. So. That would be, <laughs> I would spill my drink. Oh. I'm just saying. Uh, from Sander, is there an option to show the current solution in the title bar? I believe we had it before. Yeah, so um, there actually is an option to go into tools options and reset the title bar back. Oh, so just a lot of resetting then if you want to go in there. Uh, here's a question. Will live unit testing be available in the professional edition? No. Uh, live unit testing is a feature that's exclusive to Visual Studio Enterprise. Okay. Uh, next question uh, from Ilias, are you planning to work on improving development and debugging experience for Microsoft Dynamics CRM? Now here, this is an interesting question because when people ask this, I feel like they're like, you're, there's like 10 of us here at Microsoft and we're all like talking to each other. Why don't you describe like what it takes to build something like this? Because every, everyone's going to have a question of, are you planning to work on Foo for Visual Studio? Why don't you describe this process? Um, sure. So the Dynamic CRM, I mean, this is this is a little bit of kind of insider baseball, but the Dynamic CRM team is obviously a different team than the Visual Studio team. Uh, and while we collaborate with each other, it's, you know, we're not sitting in the same room, we're not, not sitting in the same building. Um, sometimes we're pretty far away from each other. So while we might talk every, you know, couple of months about kind of what needs to happen, uh, we're not not talking all the time. Um, and actually the Dynamic CRM ex like development experience uh, that's in Dynamic CRM is part of the Dynamic CRM product, not the Visual Studio product. Mm -hmm. um, they have some extensions for Visual Studio. Um, so, you know, all of the debugging improvements that are in C Sharp that, that would show up there will show, you know, show up in Visual Studio would show up for Dynamic. Having said that, though, tell us what you want. Yeah. Like, like if, if someone comes and is like, hey, we really want this Foo product to be super good in Visual Studio 2019, 
we will go talk to whomever about whatever. I mean, you saw that in the keynote. Yeah, and it's also super important that, that if that's really important to you, that you're also getting that feedback to the Dynamics team. Awesome. Oh, and I, I, I went moved this one away. This is from Starling. For you, what's the main improvement of Visual Studio 2019? I, I know we kind of harp on it, but if you could condense it down to one thing, what would it be for you? I think the thing that pe most people are going to mo notice are that streamlining theme. Um, you know, and that I would include performance, UI improvements, the search experience, um, things like that, that will basically just make you feel like you are sailing through code. That's awesome. Joseph? Yeah, I mean, same. So it's snappier. It's, uh, you're getting to code quicker. Get to code. That's the most visible thing, right? Uh, improved Git support. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you'll, you'll definitely feel it's, you know, it, it's, it's a new... It's a new idea. It's new. You. There's it's shininess. New. new is nice. I love it. Uh, from Dimitri, any news about Visual Studio extensibility in VS 2019? So what we've really been working on uh, with the ecosystem or in the 2019 era as we've been developing it is basically getting more things um, out, of, out of process and asynchronous. And so that really is, is improving the reliability and the performance of the core Visual Studio product. Awesome. So from Arwin, just to let you know, he installed the absolute minimum with no workloads. It's 2.5 minutes for him. I think that's what I said. Yeah, is which, is, said? which is awesome. Like, <laughs> we have a community validation that this is actually the right thing. I just want to make sure that you knew uh, that. Uh, does VS 2019 have an ARM template validation and improved intelligence? Now, ARM template, I'm assuming they mean Azure Resource Management, Manager Template. Yeah, so I, um, that's actually a highly requested feature that we're looking at for the next, you know, next semester, basically. Cool. Yeah. So here's a, a question about, because they're so excited. Actually, this is, there is an answer to this question. Any idea about when will the IntelliCode be available for VS Code for C Sharp? Um, so the IntelliCode, uh, IntelliCode itself is actually something that's available for Visual Studio Code, yeah. and it's it's actually the same extension for any programming language that you're programming in. So if you're doing Python or C Sharp or um, TypeScript down the road, like then it will just automatically pick up um, which programming language you're, you're programming in, and then kind of um, the completion list will start to show up. Cool, and, and it's so subtle that you may not even know that it's it just look for the little star. Yeah. Right? Because sometimes I, I, I miss it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the one I want. Ooh, good. Yeah, that was a big debate. We were, we were trying to decide if we should actually distinguish the IntelliCode recommendations or just change the reordering. Um, and in the end, we decided to include the star just so that you know kind of what's coming from there. Because otherwise, I think you probably wouldn't notice. Yeah. And you'd just feel more productive, but you wouldn't really know why. And, and not only that, but I feel like when it comes to AI things, we need to be pretty upfront that it's being generated by AI. Yeah, I agree. And a star is really good for that. Okay, so from uh, M. Kenyon, the second, what changes have you made for deploying to Docker, VS1? You mentioned something a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, so we've actually uh, improved a lot of the ASP.NET kind of publish experience, so you can actually go and, and deploy directly to a Docker container. Um, you know, we've made it easier to kind of discover a D Docker container that you might want to attach to, things like that. That's awesome. So next question, is there an integrated console in VS 2019 like code? Great feature in code, we'd love to have it in VS. I think what he means is an integrated terminal, yeah, terminal term yeah. experience. So one of the things that uh, actually this came from LiveShare, when we found that people were collaborating, a lot of times the issue of like, the bug repros on your machine, but it doesn't repro on my machine, mm -hmm. are actually due to environment setup and configuration. And the only way to kind of go figure that out is to actually go and get terminal access to the other person's machine. And so via live share, we kind of came, we, we increased the priority of in, in introducing an integrated terminal in uh, 2019 mm -hmm. for the purposes of live share. So now it is there. Cool. So that was a Good answer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, from Ishan uh, uh, Bhutani, how has VS 2019 improved over VS 2017 in performance parameters for low configuration devices? And I, I, maybe they mean like not so powerful machines. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I haven't looked at that that specific question, kind of those dimensions, super recently. Um, so I don't know. I can't just cite that off the top of my head. Um, 
I, I couldn't speak specifics, but just to point out on the, on the Mac, I run a 2013 MacBook because the keyboard works great. <laughs> oh, snap. And so, like, you know, at least on that side, I know that uh, our, our improvements are uh, working great on, on older hardware, very visible. So That's cool. Well, we have about two minutes left, and so if there's any other questions that come in, I'll make sure to grab them. But what's the takeaway for people? What do you want them to do? What do you want them to tell us uh, if they're experiencing, what, about their experience? Because, like, I... I'm a programmer. Usually, I've learned over the many years that if some if a customer says, "Yeah, but can it also?" it means that I did the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the big thing is go install Visual Studio 2019. It's safe to install on your machine right next to 2017. You can open up your projects and start working on them. Um, and I think if you're encountering any kind of issues or have any kind of feedback, you can always go up into the right-hand corner with that little. Uh, that little message box and basically send us a message of feedback uh, to our dev community. And, and we look at those. It's not like a... We look at every single one. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I know that one of our, because I work in the cloud advocacy group, one of our people put it in and they got like an email. Yep. Like, I, I, like every time I do stuff you know, at Microsoft, I get an email from someone. They're like, hey, how was your experience? They don't know who I am. Yeah. I mean, we definitely use like, uh, we use uh, software to actually detect duplicates and things like that. And so if we find that it is a duplicate, then we might kind of resolve it and say, hey, this is a duplicate. But if it's something that's a suggestion or if it's a feature request or you know something like that or, or an issue that you're encountering, then that will definitely be looked at by, by a person on our team. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. It is time now for us to uh, check in with Jeff. Jeff, are you there, buddy? He's right. Oh, we're not checking in with Jeff? Okay, that's okay. He's running. I saw him grab his hat and run over there. I think his beard turned white after that. <laughs> Pretty excited about that. 